Wow, there he is. Where? Where? I want to see him. Over there? Wow, this is so cool. I see him too. I can't believe this is happening. We're actually going to see him. Do you think he'll say anything? I sure hope so. I've heard so much about him. It's so exciting to finally see him in person. Have you ever been able to see a famous or important person? It's exciting, isn't it? Wave your hand if you are seeing that person right now. Many people in Israel wanted to see a man whom they heard could do miracles. What is a miracle? Say it with me. Something only God can do. Who do you think that was? It was Jesus, God of power and glory. Each time you hear those words again today, make some muscles when you hear the word power and sparkly fingers when you hear the word glory. Jesus was so amazing that many people wanted to see him. But Jesus and his disciples had been very busy and they were tired. Can you pretend to be tired? They needed to rest, but so many people were coming and going, they couldn't rest or even eat. Jesus knew his disciples needed some rest, so he told them to come with him. They crossed the Sea of Galilee and went up the mountain to find a quiet place, far from any city. Thumbs up if you think they were alone, and thumbs down if you think they weren't. Thumbs down is right. Thousands of people followed them. They were still not able to rest. Think about how that would make you feel if you were very tired. Instead of being angry or annoyed because the people wouldn't let him rest, Jesus cared for the people. He knew they needed help, so he began teaching them. He taught for a long time. Listen to what God's word tells us happened next. Late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the nearby farms and villages and buy something to eat. But Jesus said, You feed them. Jesus had told the disciples to give the people something to eat. Perhaps the disciples quickly talked together to figure out how to do this. Let's imagine what they might have said. Look at all these people. There are at least 5,000 men here, plus lots of women and children. How are we supposed to feed all of them? They don't have food, and we don't have food to give them. All we have are five loaves of bread and two fish that a boy brought in. Oh, we can't buy food for them, that's for sure. Even if someone worked hard for 200 days, they wouldn't earn enough money to feed all these people. Even if we did have enough money, there's nowhere for us to buy this much food. Let's tell Jesus this is impossible. Jesus already knew this was impossible for the disciples. But Jesus is God of glory and power, and he already had a plan to provide for the people. He was going to use a young boy and the little he had to provide what the people and the disciples needed. If you have trusted Jesus as your Savior, trust your Heavenly Father for everything you need. Maybe you need to know how you can serve Jesus. You might think you have little to offer. Maybe you know just a little of the Bible, but you could share that with someone else. Perhaps you have only a little time you could use to help someone in need. Maybe you have just a little talent God might use to encourage someone. Jesus isn't looking for people who have lots to offer. He just wants people who are willing to trust him and let him use what they have. Let's read what he says. Trust in the Lord and do good. You also have some fives and twos you could give to the Lord. You have two hands with five fingers each, two eyes, two ears, two lips, two feet with five toes each. Let's think about what Jesus could do with these fives and twos if you let him use them. You could use your two hands with five fingers each to help your mom or your grandma bring in groceries or do yard work. You could use your two feet with five toes each to go help an older neighbor. You could use your two eyes and two ears to notice when someone is sad. Then you could use your two lips to say kind, encouraging words to them. It isn't usually easy, 
But if you have trusted Jesus as your Savior, you can trust your Heavenly Father with everything you need to serve Him. Jesus wanted to teach the disciples to trust Him for everything. He had a plan. He thanked God for the five loaves of bread and two fish and began to divide it up for the people. Show me with your fingers how much food they started with. How many loaves of bread? Five. How many fish? Two. Show me with your fingers how many people you think that would feed. At the most, ten, but it certainly wasn't enough to feed this huge, hungry crowd. But Jesus told the disciples to give the food to the people. They gave food to thousands of people, but the food didn't run out. They continued to pass out food while everyone ate until they were full. Then Jesus told the disciples to gather the leftovers. There was enough leftover food to fill 12 baskets. Jesus did a miracle. He could do this because he is God and he has the same great power as God the Father. The Bible says, How great is our Lord! His power is absolute. His understanding is beyond comprehension. God is so great that we can't even measure or understand how wise and powerful He is. Can you flex your muscles and show me how strong you are? God is stronger than we can imagine. That's why God is able to do things we can't explain. God made you and loves you so much. He has given you the Bible so you can know Him and enjoy being with Him forever. God's home is perfect, just like He is, and He wants us to be there with Him. God is so great, no one else can completely understand or measure how wise and powerful He is. Jesus showed God's great power when He fed the crowd. The huge crowd couldn't explain how Jesus did this miracle, but over 5,000 people had seen it and eaten the food He gave them. The people believed Jesus had great power. They wanted him to do more for them. They thought if Jesus could feed all of them, he could also fix all the problems in their country. They wanted to force Jesus to be their king. They wanted to be saved from the problems in their country, but Jesus had come to save them from their biggest problem of all, their sin. Sin is thinking saying or doing things your way instead of God's way, making up stories to make yourself look good, or complaining about not getting your way are sins. Planning to get even with someone else is a sin, even if they were mean to you first. Ever since the very first people sinned, all people have been born wanting to sin against God. The Bible tells us when Adam sinned, Sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone, for everyone sinned. Sin is a huge problem because it keeps you from having a relationship with God. It keeps you from ever knowing the goodness of a friendship with God. God wants you to know how terrible your sin is and that He is the only one who can save you. Sin is the most terrible problem in the world. The people weren't focused on their problem of sin. Instead, they thought Jesus should fix the problems with their country. Let's make him our king, they said. Say that to your friend or pretend friend. Jesus knew it was not God's plan for him to take over the government. He and the disciples went away from the people so they couldn't try to force him to be their king. The next day, the crowd noticed Jesus was gone and they began searching for him. They found Jesus in Capernaum and hoped he would continue to feed them. Where did they find Jesus? Let's say the name of that town together, Capernaum. Jesus knew what they wanted, but he knew what they really needed was to be saved from their sin. Our word up for today is about that. Jesus is the Savior. From now on, when you hear me say word up, then you can say Jesus is the Savior. Let's practice. Word up, 
Jesus is the Savior. Jesus told them they were too worried about getting more food. What they really needed was someone who could give them eternal life. Jesus told them amazing things about himself to help them understand that he was the one who could give them what they really needed. He told them, I have come down from heaven to do the will of God who sent me, not to do my own will. He was telling them he had come from heaven to complete God's plan to save people. God's plan wasn't to make sure they had lots of food, but to make a way for them to have eternal life. He said, For it is my Father's will that all who see his Son and believe in him should have eternal life. Jesus was saying that he is the Son of God who came to make a way for them to have eternal life. Jesus came to make a way for you to have eternal life too. There is no way you can save yourself from sin. Jesus is God and he is the only way you can be saved. Word up, Jesus is the Savior. A short time after today's story, he bled and died on the cross to take the punishment for your sin. The Bible says, when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Because Jesus is God, he never sinned. He had no sin of his own to be punished for, but he willingly took the punishment for your sin. Jesus said he had power to save people from sin and give them eternal life. He proved this by coming back to life after he suffered and died for your sin. Only God's power could do that. Hundreds of people saw Jesus alive before he left earth to return to heaven. Today, Jesus is the king in heaven, and he has power to save you from sin and give you eternal life with God. Jesus told the people he had come from heaven to give eternal life, but that wasn't what they wanted to hear. Many of the people stopped following Jesus that day. Jesus asked the twelve disciples if they were going to stop following him too. Peter said, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words that give eternal life. We believe and we know you are the Holy One of God. Peter believed that Jesus came to give eternal life. Word up, Jesus is the Savior. The disciples had a lot to learn about Jesus, but they were beginning to realize that Jesus didn't just come to feed people. He was showing his power and glory. Jesus had the power to save them from their sin, give them eternal life, and to provide everything else they needed. If you have trusted Jesus as your Savior, trust your Heavenly Father for everything you need. If you need to know how to serve Him, Remember, Jesus isn't looking for people who have lots to offer. He just wants people who are willing to let him use what they have. What are some fives and twos you can give to Jesus and how? Right now, ask Jesus to show you ways you can use what he has given you this week. You can't serve Jesus until you first trust that Jesus God the Son is the Savior who gave his life to take the punishment for your sin and give eternal life. The Bible says everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. Eternal life is life forever with God that begins right now and continues forever, even after you die. Jesus will give this eternal life to anyone who believes in him. Jesus is God's perfect Son who took the punishment for your sin. Have you believed in Jesus as your Savior? If not, you can do that today. Tell God you know you have sinned, but you believe Jesus came to die for your sin. Ask Him to give you His eternal life. When you do that, you can trust that God will do what He promised to do. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for taking care of our worst problem, sin. Help those who haven't yet trusted you as their Savior to do that today. 
Help those of us who have already trusted you as Savior to also trust you for everything we need. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus can do so many amazing things because he is God. Let's sing about our amazing God. <laughs> 